We can figure out the molecular geometry for CH3F several ways. This is fluoromethane. The first way is we could look at the steric number, how many things are attached to the central carbon here. So if we look at the steric number, we have one, two, three. We have four things attached. So our steric number is four, and there are no lone pairs. These pairs of electrons here, they're all involved in chemical bonds. So around the carbon, we don't have any lone pairs. That makes CH3F tetrahedral. But let's take a minute to visualize the molecular geometry here for CH3F. So the purple here, that's the central atom. That'll be our carbon. Let's add three hydrogens. One, two, you see they're spreading out to be as far away from each other as they can. Three, and that gives us this trigonal planar molecular geometry. We put the last one on. This will be our fluorine. And you see that pushes them down. Everything spreads out. So that gives us the molecular geometry of tetrahedral for CH3F. If we look at the bond angles, they should be about 109.5. That's the general bond angle. Because we'd have the fluorine up here on the top, I would expect it would be a little bit different, but it'd be around that. Let's go back and use the AXE notation to check our work. So with the AXE notation, A, that's the central atom, the carbon here. X, that's the number of atoms bonded. We have one, two, three, four, so that's going to be four. E, that's the number of lone pairs on the central carbon. There aren't any. They're all involved in bonding. So if you look this up, you're going to find out it's tetrahedral, just like we found using the steric number here. This is Dr. B with the molecular geometry for CH3F. Thanks for watching.